Hello everyone, Blink here. Welcome to the second episode of the Science Applied to Leak series. In this video, I will cover the concept of flow and how you can trigger this state. Have you ever wondered how can top athletes always be so clutch when it comes to high pressure situations? The main idea here is that they are under a state called flow, or how a lot of athletes like to call it, being in the zone. But what is exactly the flow state? And where did this idea come from? The term flow was given by a Hungarian psychologist called Mihail Csikszentmihalyi Mihai in 1975, where he described in his book The Optimal Experience a state of enlightenment and effortless concentration, where one can perform at his peak skill and learn faster than normal. This was then proven by DARPA who are responsible for the development of advanced technologies for the US military. They found that the time that takes a novice sniper to get to an expert level marksman was cut in half when being under the state of flow. So how does flow work in the brain and how can you trigger this state? The best person to ask is Steven Kotler co-founder of the Flow Genome Project, he explains to us that flow produces three types of changes in the brain. Neuroanatomy changes, neuroelectricity changes, and neurochemistry changes. On neuroanatomy, you experience transient hypofrontality, or also known as temporary shutdown of the prefrontal cortex specifically the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that takes care of self-perception, moral standard, consequences of current activities, etc. Basically, that inner critical voice is shut down under the state of flow. This part of the brain is really slow, high energy consuming and has limited working memory. When turned off, our subconscious mind takes over which is faster and consumes less energy. This has been shown recently in a 2016 study by Martin Ulrich, where they induced flow in subjects by giving them arithmetic tasks adjust to the individual skill level. By using fMRI scans, they found that there was less activation of the prefrontal cortex. This is why when athletes are asked how did they manage to perform under so much pressure, they usually respond that it came naturally to them. The neurochemistry changes may be the most important ones. When being in flow, a cocktail of neurochemicals are released into your brain. Norepinephrine, which increases alertness, promotes vigilance and enhances formation and retrieval of memory. Dopamine, which increases motivation and drive, it also lowers distractions. Anandamine, which reduces anxiety and depression. It also promotes pattern recognition and lateral thinking, which increases creativity. Endorphins and serotonin, these two produce a feeling of euphoria and overall well-being. All these chemicals are extremely addictive. This is why this state produces intrinsic motivation, which makes you want to come back for more. Neuroelectricity changes. Normally, we operate in beta waves, which are fast moving waves. Flow happens in between alpha, which is a daydreaming wave, and theta, which is only accessible in the hypnagogic state, as we are about to fall asleep. Being in between these two waves trigger more gamma spikes, basically those aha moments of brilliance. Now that we know how this state works, let's talk about how to trigger it on a daily basis. 
Recent studies of the Flow Genome project found 17 ways to trigger a flow state, but we will cover only the ones that we can trigger within LEAP. Intensely focused attention. You need to block all distractions and focus on the task at hand. You need to be present in the now. Skill and challenge ratio. Chinsek Mihai and his team developed a really accurate flow model where they found that the relationship between your skill and the challenge need to be really close. Too much of skill and too low of challenge will lead to boredom. Too much of challenge and too low of skill will produce an anxiety. Basically, you need to be in the sweet spot between skill and challenge. When these two conditions are met, we are able to experience flow. But we need to understand the flow process in order to trigger it consistently, and not just acutely. We experience flow in the following phases. The struggle phase, where we overload the brain with information and cortisol levels go up, which is a stress hormone. Unlike flow, this is a really unpleasant state, but it's part of the process to achieve flow. Release phase, where we take our mind off the problem, we let go and relax. By doing so, a global release of nitric oxide happens, which flushes all the stress hormones in your system. Then, it's the flow state itself, where we feel and perform our best. And the recovery phase. The neurochemicals have been drained and now your body needs some time to replenish them. This depends on how much time you've been in the flow state. But again, this is a really unpleasant state, as you no longer feel enlightenment from being in the flow state. So basically, in order to produce flow consistently, you need to know how to struggle better, meaning to be aware when you are in this phase and to learn to let your mind go of the problem. And you need to know how to recover better, meaning to understand that you are no longer in a flow state and to give your body proper rest to replenish those neurochemicals. Another really good way to get more flow is to practice meditation. For a lot of people, meditation might be when you sit down and try to zoom out of the world. But it's actually the exact opposite. When you sit down to meditate, you focus on bringing your attention to something and eliminate all distractions. The practice of this skill will lead to a lot of benefits. In fact, the list of benefits of meditation is quite long. I'll make a whole video about meditation explaining everything in more detail. But the main reason why meditation can help you get more flow is because it helps you get better at eliminating distractions. Tim Ferriss mentions in his book, Tools of Titans, more than 80% of the world-class performers I've interviewed have some form of daily meditation or mindfulness practice. So consider adopting this habit and it will greatly improve your mental state. Thanks a lot guys for checking this one out. Let me know in the comments if you found the information helpful. And to any of you interested, I will be starting to stream this week.